Hello and welcome to my crafty update. Thank you for joining me this week. I've got lots and lots to chat about this week and I'll try not to linger too long on anything. However, as always, do use the timestamps or the chapters in the video description to just jump around to whichever bits you'd like to watch. I'll be covering my sketchbooks, all three of my sketchbooks, a little bit about the watercolour painting that I've been doing and a very brief section on the glass painting which I've been trying. And as always, there'll be a little life update as well. So this week I'm going to start with my sketchbooks and I'll start with my regular sketchbook first. I've really barely touched it to be fair. I tested out my new Payne's Grey that I got last time and I tried doing a few little uh, flower drawings, which I hope to do more of in the next few weeks. And I also did a handful of quick watercolour experiments. It was just about seeing how the paint blended and what happened if I dropped extra water on the page. I had thought I might do more in my sketchbook. It has been three weeks after all, but I've been working on paintings outside the sketchbook on watercolour paper instead. So these two, they're pages that I started in my art challenge, which will be published next Friday. I was trying out some different watercolour techniques with cling film and salt, and these two were the salt pages. I won't give any more spoilers than that, but I decided to work on the pages a little bit further. I love the green ones so far, and neither of them are at a finish point yet. I might add a little tree or a building to this green one. I'm going to contemplate on that one a little bit, and we'll see where I'm at next time I speak to you. The blue one, I'm indifferent. It's nothing spectacular. It's not inspiring me at all. Maybe it needs a boat or something. I'll have to think on that one as well. But I will endeavour to finish both of these pictures off in time for my next crafty update. I also worked on the bamboo paintings. I did an A4 one, which wasn't on proper watercolour paper. And it didn't work out so well. And then I did the series of three on the postcard sized watercolour paper that I have. And I did post that up earlier in the week. So if you haven't seen that and want to, then do go onto my profile and you'll be able to find it, I'm sure. I did find that working on a smaller scale, because I've been doing most of my practice work in my A5 sketchbook and the watercolour paper is A6, scaling down the practice work that I've done kind of found that I just wasn't as free with my brush strokes and the detail needed a lot more of a delicate touch to it and obviously I was using a smaller paintbrush as well to adjust for working on a smaller page. So I think in the future what I'll do is I'll divide my sketchbook up. If I'm going to do the actual painting on an A6 page I need to do my practice on an A6 scale. Overall, I was quite happy with the result. It's not perfect. I've still got an awful lot to learn when it comes to watercolour. But I'm, yeah, overall, I was pretty pleased with it. In my portrait sketchbook, I've managed just two drawings. Again, I've done less in these sketchbooks than I have in my neurographic sketchbook because I've had a few bad days. But the two drawings that I have done I was quite pleased with. So each of these drawings took about four days to do and I would normally sit down and do them in 30 minute or 45 minute sessions a day. I'm still very much trying to hone my observational skills and that's why these drawings are taking so long but I do feel like it's working. Every pencil mark that I put down on the page is checked and double checked it's a little bit like doing a jigsaw in a way. There's lots of looking before I make a mark on the page. And each mark that I am making, I'm making in, well, much slower and much more deliberate. Anyway, I was very happy with Mrs. Graham. Less happy with Ned. But that one was a real challenge for me. There was a lot going on. I'm still quite happy with it, don't get me wrong. 
and I know that I am honing my observational skills. I'll keep going, I'll do a few more over the next couple of weeks and I'll show you what progress I've made then. So before I show you my new neurographic sketchbook, I'm going to do my mini art haul because some of what I got is relevant. Not all of it, but some of it. I've had a few impulse buys over the last few weeks. I've been scouting around in the discount stores. It's quite unlike me to impulse buy. Going in the discount stores isn't, but to impulse buy is quite unlike me. I do like a bargain, but I do usually try to weigh up whether I actually need or want something. If it's going to be useful, I'll get it. If it's just something I like, I generally don't get it. So I'm not an impulse buyer. However, I did pick up these two sets of pastels in Aldi. They were $3.99 each. One is oil pastels and the other is soft pastels. And the reason I picked them up was because if you're familiar with Aldi, you'll know. Anything in the middle aisle doesn't stay in the middle aisle for long. And these were middle aisle. If you don't get them whilst you see them, they won't be there next week. So I did sneak them into my basket between the bananas and the rosemary crackers. I don't plan on using these in the next couple of weeks as I have a few other projects that I'd like to finish off first. But when I saw them, I thought, yes, they are on the list to try. So I should get them whilst they're cheap. And then when I was having a little scavenge around in Home Bargains, I found this scrapbook with black matte pages and I thought that would be nice to try with the pastels. So I've picked that up as well. That was £1.99, so it didn't break the bank. I just thought that doing something on a different colour paper would be quite fun to do. So I snapped that up because sometimes Home Bargains can be a little bit like Aldi. You get it whilst you see it because you never know if it's going to stay in stock. So whilst I love a bargain, sometimes I do just go straight for the quality and what I know. So because I've only got a handful of pages left in my regular sketchbook, I did pick up this new one in Hobbycraft. It's another A5 Sea White of Brighton sketchbook. It cost £5.50. I really like the paper in this Sea White sketchbook. It's good for most things and it's a handy size as well so you can just carry it around with you. It works for the watercolour practice and the acrylic paint and watercolour pencil and drawing ink. The pages do buckle a little bit but it's fine for practice and for a sketchbook. I've had worse paper buckling for sure. It is an all media sketchbook so and it has been sized so that's why I think it's good for most things. I didn't really like it for pencil drawings that's why I picked up a separate sketchbook for the pencil drawings. So I got this because I'm quite close to finishing up this one. My last impulse buys and these definitely were impulse buys were these manga pens. I picked them up in the works for £3 for a set of five. I've got no intention of trying to draw manga, well at least not yet anyway, maybe I could put that on the list of things for the future. And I had no idea what a manga pen even was, but I was definitely drawn in by the colours, something in my head just went ooh, and yeah that was an impulse buy. I picked up one pack, but I couldn't not get the other pack, it was kind of like I walked away and I came back, and I walked away and I came back. It turns out that a manga pen has a brush type nib on one end. and a fine liner tip on the other. It also turns out that they're little more than felt tip pens. I will save the griping about these pens when I talk about my neurographic sketchbook, which I will do now. So my new neurographic sketchbook, it's A4, it's 270 GSM paper, or it's more like card to be fair. Some of you may recall that I picked up three of these I'm beginning to wish that I hadn't. They're awful. Well, they're awful for what I wanted them for. I'm adapting. And here's how it's been. So I started this book with the full process video that I put up a few weeks back. It didn't go to plan. It was awful. The new big gold marker that I had was very, very streaky on the page. And to start with, I couldn't figure out if it was the pen or the paper. 
is the paper. It's so smooth and it has like zero absorbency. The drawing ink on this one, which incidentally appears to be going bad like my apple green ink, so if anyone knows why that is, please let me know. Um, it just, yeah, the ink just sits on top of the page and even with three coats, I couldn't achieve a good finish on the drawing. So I kept going back to it in an attempt to salvage it and then I smudged all the ink, even though it had been left for half an hour and my drawing ink usually dries well within a few minutes. So yeah, that's how bad the paper is at absorbing the ink. So all in, it was a bit of a disaster. And that's not how anyone wants the first page of their sketchbook to look, but that's what happened. So I figured I should try and test the paper with some different mediums. And I tried it with watercolour and acrylic paint. And then I tried it again with uh, larger areas. And the acrylic here had two to three coats, but it still looks quite streaky to me. Anyway, I'm not sure if it comes up on camera. I mean, that could partly be the paint I'm using because some of these acrylic paints are quite old. But to guess, some of these paints are leftovers from when my daughter did her GCSEs. And given that she turns 25 this year, that's how old they are. Anyway. So then I moved on to the Zentangle Challenge. I won't give you all the details about that as it's already in the video that I did. But I have been attempting to integrate some of the Zentangle patterns into my neurographic art. So this is what the manga pens looked like. Streaky, streaky felt tip pens. I still love the colours though. Whilst I've been working on trying to incorporate some of the Zentangle with the neurographic art, I've found that the manga pens are fine in small areas. And they're also fine to just try out new things, which I can then rework when I get a better sketchbook that will work with the mediums that I want to use, non-streaky mediums. In a way, I'm kind of feeling like I want to get some more marker pens or alcohol inks to try in this sketchbook. I said I wouldn't buy them again, didn't I? Mm, I don't know. I've still got three sketchbooks to fill. Oh dear. The dilemmas in my life, I mean, honestly. <laughs> Back to the manga pens. The fine liner ends are good for fine details, but they really are just fine liners. So unless you find yourself drawn into the colors like me, then I'm not really going to recommend these for general work. I just think they're glorified felt tip pens in nice colors. As you can see, I've been doing lots of neurographic versus Zentangle drawings. I'm going to have to call this my doodle sketchbook or my graphic design sketchbook now as it's not purely neurographic and I feel like a bit of a fraud announcing it as that. But, you know, this paper does love marker pens, it does love the gel pens. It's okay with the fine liners, it's not great. I did dig out some of my old coloured gel pens, which I'd abandoned before Christmas because I didn't like them in my old sketchbook. And these little pops of colour, they're great, aren't they? I just, I love them. I love the little pops of colour. I'm starting to really enjoy exploring with some different shapes in the sketchbook. Not all of these pictures are great, but I am having a whole lot of fun bringing in a whole new element to my work. And now there's only four pages left in this sketchbook, so it will be finished quite soon. And then there's only two more left to fill. So what else have I been up to? Well, I have briefly mentioned that I had a go with glass painting. I'm not quite ready for the big reveal yet, and I'm going to try not to give away too many spoilers, but I will just say it's definitely been a challenge. When it's complete, I will put it up as a full craft challenge. I can't promise it will be next week. I was hoping it would be, but it might take a little bit longer. Watch this space though, because it is coming. 
I've also been working on some of my flower tutorials as well and coming up next will be the tea rose buttonhole and the true love bouquet and regrettably I still haven't completed my Jane Austen figurine I haven't even so much as picked her up in three weeks until today for this video I'm going to put that as a priority for next week next week I will be working on this figurine and I will work on the watercolour pictures that need finishing off and I'll also finish up hopefully the glass painting. So that's pretty much it for the arts and crafts. So what's been going on here? Well we've just returned from a few days away in Lincolnshire and North Norfolk which was wonderful. The weather was pretty good, we had a few showers, a few heavy downpours which we weren't outside for so that was fine. And given that my illness has uh, been a bit of a roller coaster over the last 12 months, I did pretty well on this trip. One day, I even managed a three mile walk. Yay! <laughs> I was pretty tired afterwards, but I managed it and yeah, it's great. I saw lots and lots of things that have given me plenty of inspiration for future artwork. Some of the colours that I saw on the beach. One of the places we went to was Sandringham Estate. We had a lovely walk around the woodland in the estate. Oh wow, some of those trees were absolutely stunning. I love being in the woodland. I love hearing the birds, the rustling of the leaves. It's one of my happy places being in the woodland, so that was quite glorious to do. And the other thing that was a really big uplift for my soul was visiting the cliffs at Anstanton and walking along the beach. We did a little bit of fossil hunting, well I didn't but my better half did um, and he found one which is great and there were lots of um, rocks which had some lovely colours in which I'm going to try to bring into some of my doodle graphic -y, neuro graphic -y, whatever I'm going to decide to call it sketchbook um, so yeah, watch this space because there were lots of lovely things to see. Health-wise, well, yeah, I managed a few days away. That was great. I was probably assisted by the course of steroids that I was put on, which I've now finished. That's been a bit of a roller coaster, and I haven't really known where, where I've been at because I started on a high dose, which made me hyper and I couldn't sleep. And then the middle dose was great and on the high dose and the middle dose all of my body stiffness went completely it started creeping back in on the low dose it's still there on a low level now but i've only finished the steroids for a couple of days now so i don't know whether it's going to come back or stay low level who knows i had a couple of bad days when my fatigue was really not good and i don't know how much of that is to do with all of the other medications that I'm on you know the hydroxychloroquine really helped with taking away all my pain and the steroids made me feel more capable so who knows who knows where we're going to go from here the good thing is I'm pretty much pain free and the stiffness is nowhere near as bad as it was I can get out of a chair without feeling uncomfortable now Generally, I think the stiffness is only there on quite a low level, apart from when I first wake up in the morning, so yeah, I can't complain too much really. I've just had an array of blood tests yesterday for endocrinology and rheumatology. We'll see what they say. My Graves is in remission and I hope to find out whether or not the antibody is still there. We won't find out for a couple of days, so fingers crossed on that one. So that's about it for this week. Oh, and in other news, I should just mention, I have set up a Patreon page. I am still kind of figuring out how it all works and I am still setting it up, but I will be posting all kinds of little updates throughout the week. They might be works in progress, they might be little videos, they might be little insights into my daily life. 
you can join for free you don't have to become a member but some of the posts you won't be able to see unless you're a member you can join as a member for three pounds fifty a month and as a paid member you would have access to exclusive posts and little videos and little bits in the background but to kick things off you can have a seven day free trial and have access to my full patreon account don't forget to cancel it if you don't want to actually pay the £3.50. I'm not going to be offended, it's fine. But I've put up a exclusive video, just for members, which you can access on the free trial, of my first craft room clear out video. This was recorded in January and I thought I might post it up to YouTube, but I had so much other stuff to put on that I haven't got around to it yet. And it's just me clearing up one shelf in my craft stash. It might not be interesting. Some people like to watch people tidying up and some people don't. Some people are just curious about what craft equipment people use. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. But I have put that up as a member exclusive post, which you can access seven days for free. I do hope that you'll drop by and say hello or drop a little heart onto some of my posts. And yeah, don't forget to cancel if you don't want, to, don't want to pay, it's fine. I will put up posts that are unpaid so you can join for free without actually becoming a member. Does that all make sense? If you don't pay, you can still access some of the posts I put up. And if you do pay, you can access everything. But it's £3.50 a month and you can have seven days access for free, but don't forget to cancel don't want to pay that's fine I've already said that I won't be offended I do feel a little bit awkward about saying all this but um yeah everyone else is doing it and I thought I'd give it a try so yeah I've got a patreon account do go and have a look anyway thank you very very much for joining me again this week do give me a thumbs up if you made it this far and I can't stress enough how much your support really does give me a little boost my next crafty update will be in two weeks time and as i've already mentioned i've got lots and lots of stuff to share with you in the meantime so do check out my video description for all of the links for everything i've mentioned in this video and until next time stay crafty